Welcome to Vintage Gaming Memories. Shall we play a game? Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now let's get right into this video. So right here I have an item that I received in the mail the other day from an eBay transaction and I'm really excited to check this out. So this is a vintage Panasonic all-in-one system from 1982. This is the Panasonic TR4060P by Cider Television. Now it also has a combination AM and FM radio and a clock. And its design, when you see this, is going to be pretty unique looking. It has a swivel base that makes it really physically stand out from anything that you probably have seen before. And I guess just because this is another Panasonic that I have, I should probably preface that I'm not a Panasonic collector, but I do have quite a bit of those in my collection for one reason or another. It's probably because of the design, and I think you probably agree with it when I show you some of these pictures on the screen here. So I have a uh, Panasonic TR-1200X that's from 1982. I have a Panasonic TR-5050P from 1981. And then my prized possession, the probably all that I have, even with the games and the uh, systems that I have, the computer systems, would probably be this one right here, the Panasonic TR-001 from 1970. I would say that probably because it's the world's smallest television and because of who owned it previously, Danny Thomas. I mean, there's a lot of history with this. I thought it was a really great pickup and something I'll probably not find anything close to this value of personal value of its connection with someone that's done a lot in this world. Now, that's um, the television side of things that I have. And a lot of them, as you can tell, they're all portable, whether it's a boom box or a handheld. Um, there's also some other ones I have that are not Panasonic that I didn't mention that I haven't done videos on either which are the Seiko TV watch, T0015019, that's from 1983. That's also referred to the James Bond watch because it was used by James Bond in the film Octopussy. And I have also a Sony Watchman FD45A from 1986, a Sony Watchman FD210 from 1982, and last is the Epson ELF ET10 that's brand new in the box from 1984. That's a pretty cool pickup as well. But all that set aside, and this one is, again, the Panasonic TR4060P by Cider Television, and let's open it up. Well, here it is. As you can tell, my hand is pretty much the size of this, at least the width, and it measures about a little bit over 8 inches wide, about 7 inches deep, and currently at about 6 inches tall. Why do I say currently? Well, here's what's cool about this combination, television, radio, and clock. What you need to do, if you want to see the other side of it, is just push it towards you a little bit, and next thing you know, it stands up. And now it's got the radio and the clock and the speaker in front. Here's the radio dial. And then you'll see once I plug this in, the clock will be illuminated here. The speaker is here. Controls are on top as well. Now the height changes over to a little bit under 9 inches. So this is what's really unique about this. And a lot of the Panasonics are very unique and pretty interesting in how they design this. Now this is a working condition television, radio, and clock. So... Um, I'm not expecting to do any work on this, which is great. I'm just going to have to clean it up a little bit and then plug it in and give it a try. So I'll be right back in one second. Okay, I'm back. And yes, once again, I cleaned this up and even polished the plastic, but I haven't even tested it out yet. So who knows? But my confidence level is running high that this will all work out. All right, let's take a look at how this all turned out, which I think turned out pretty well. So I did a typical cleaning which is using the Clorox or Lysol wipes, which is very low in concentration of bleach. Well, it's high enough to kill any germs, but not too high where it's going to be a concern of discoloring the plastic or maybe, I don't know, taking out some of the stickers or anything that would be on here that you'd worry from something that's very vintage. So that never had an issue with it. I don't really rub hard on it. I just wipe it down, dry it off, and then afterwards I put some the polish which is the novus one products which is this for the plastic cleaning 
use Novus 1, and then I follow up with Novus 2 for those that are deeper scratches. And there's also Novus 3, which I have, but I don't have to use it for this product, thankfully. Now, the Novus 1 and 2 came in handy. One, I just used it over on everything that was plastic and also for this display here, which is the clock. When it plugs in, you'll see Illuminate. But for the front, there is a plastic cover over the tube for the television as well as the stations for the television. So this plastic was pretty scratched up, so I popped it off, used Novus 1 and Novus 2 to get the scratches off. It was just surface scratches, and it came out pretty nice, so I'm happy with how that turned out. But... Let's get back to the functions of this and I'll show you everything that I've noticed on here. Starting on the right side, we have pretty much the main functions of the whole entire system here. The first knob you have here is your volume, but it's also your power on and off. As you can see the little white dot, it's right next to the off position, clockwise turning it. You hear the click and now it's on. And then you can adjust the volume as well. Putting the volume all the way down will turn it off. To the right of that is your tuner for your radio. To the right of that is your band selector, AM and FM. And then you have also an option here for auto or manual. And then one here for bright or dim. Bright or dim is really for your clock here. You'll see when I turn it on, the difference of bright and dim. If it works. <laughs> I only know that because I've seen some other videos and I've read a little bit more. So... On the bottom level here, you have other features, more of adjustment features here. You have contrast, you have bright, you have V-hold, vertical hold, H-hold, horizontal hold, height, and all that would be really for your television. To the right of that is a 3.5 millimeter uh, outlet here for a plug-in for your earphone jack. And then how can we miss and not mention this? The full wood, screaming out 1970s, 1980s. Nice little touch to it. On the opposite side, all there is here is an external antenna plug, which is also a 3.5 millimeter, and the full wood as well. To the back, you have three little control settings here. It says um, slow, it's upside down, but slow, fast, and time. So obviously that is to set your time. And then... Below that, we have just the basic information on this unit. You have your manufacturer date of December 1982. And of course, the hertz, the wattage, and so forth. Uh, what else can I show you? On the bottom, let's look at that. You have the serial number on the bottom here, really nice and not peeled off. The footings are still there as well, and all the screws are intact. What I really do like about this unit is really how it just kind of flows into another system. Looking at it like this is the television, right? You're ready to go watch TV on this little small screen. And when you want to listen to the radio and see the clock, lift it up. And it just kind of has a nice little spring action. Sits really nice on the bottom base. And your clock will show up here and you can put the radio tunes on. The speaker will be right here to hear some sounds coming through. Pretty nice. A whole different system looks like. So let's, let's actually do it with that. We'll plug it in with the radio and clock ready to go and hope that it does illuminate. So let's get some space here. Let me plug this in. All right. Well, good sign. I see the clock and you can't see it yet unless I tilt this for you. And there it is. The clock is flashing 12 o'clock. So that works great. Um, let's change the time so it doesn't flash. If I hold the time button with fast there you go slow works great and it's got am and pm so if you missed your clock timing of what you wanted to stop at you're gonna to have to go through 24 hours to get back because you can't go backwards it's only forward fast or slow we'll leave it at 5 41 pm so that's the uh, clock and let's try the radio Let's see here. We got some sounds. I think this is AM. Let's go to FM. Sounds great. I don't want to get any copyright issues, so we'll just kind of go through the dials here. 
Sounds great. Uh, let me show you another cool thing on this. What I found, which was during my cleaning, I didn't realize it had this. The top part here has a hidden compartment. If you put your finger underneath and lift up, you can see that there is an antenna. How cool is that? So the antenna is hidden behind this little door and it is in great condition, thankfully. No need to replace anything here. Telescopic antenna, all in great condition. So we'll put that back there, but that was pretty cool. I didn't realize it had that. I just thought it had an external antenna, but so that's that. And looks like the radio's good. The clock is good. Let's try the television. So how do you toggle between the television from the radio or the radio to the television? It's pretty simple. In this form or in this, I guess, display, we're looking at the clock and the radio, correct? All you have to do is just lift this up. And now the TV is on. How cool is that? It toggles between the two by the way you lift it up. Because obviously it does trigger a different mode when you do that. And the television, I'm going to just kind of lean it like this so you can see it. We're not going to get any reception, right? Because this is analog, digital is being broadcasted. But with the external antenna outlet here I have, there is an option. You can pick this up on Amazon for cheap. I use this for my other televisions that I have to test out. It's a 3.5 to coax connection. And what I'm going to do is use that along with this adapter, which is coax to my um, RCA connection or composite, because I'll be using some video. And we'll try to see if I can get the uh, Atari 800XL to show up on here. So give me one quick second. I have to make sure I'm on three, which I just guessed it. I'm not sure if that's tuned in right, but we'll find out in a second. All right, so I got my Atari 800XL RF connection in from the back. And I will turn it on. Oh, pretty close. It's not exactly tuned right in. Let me adjust. Whoa, how you like that? Pac-Man, put the volume up a little bit. And let's hit start. So it came out pretty good. I mean, it looks nice. The display is crisp, and I haven't really adjusted the contrast or brightness. So it looks good for the initial viewing of it. And keep in mind that this is a four inch black and white television that we're viewing. Look at this. I think this is a pretty good looking television. I love the concept. I love the way it looks. This is amazing. It turned out really well. It was a really good pickup. Let's do the toggle between television and radio one more time. So as you can see that as this is still kind of in the TV mode, you can tell a little bit here that TV is still on with the Pac-Man playing and the clock still does work, but there is going to be no um, radio. And if you just want to toggle between the two, you can see the TV does turn off when you actually put it to this position. And now the radio should be able to be worked. Let me turn the volume up. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One. So that is pretty cool, right? Um, and again, going back to television. And there we go. Back to Pac-Man. So I'm definitely going to probably put this up on a shelf somewhere and probably have it in this looking view because the clock looks pretty cool. Um... Tell me what you guys think about this. Have you ever seen this before? I only saw this because I was looking for a particular Panasonic system that I'm looking to purchase, which is the UFO or Flying Saucer one, which it looks like this right here. And that one's a, not a hard to find, but it's hard to find in good condition, or at least working condition. I'm looking to buy that one, and that's probably going to be my last purchase. Once I get that Panasonic, that's going to be it. And like I said, I'm not a Panasonic collector, but it sure seems like it. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is 
pretty cool, I thought. And I thought this was worth sharing. I know there are some people on the internet that actually have this system and uh, are enjoying this, whether they're just using it as a clock and radio all the time. But I don't think I'm going to have this turned on all the time because I haven't opened this up to see if there's anything inside that needs to be replaced, which I probably end up doing next because I just want to make sure nothing's going to be surprising me in the future when I turn this on again. But for the most part, this looks awesome. So this is the Panasonic TR4060P Bicider Television Radio Clock Combo from 1982. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to comment below and subscribe to help support the channel. And until next time, keep your gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.